ABC 7 Bangor. This is ABC 7 News at Noon. We have new information regarding a fatal crash on the main turnpike over the weekend. Good afternoon, I'm Susan Farley. That story is coming up. Also, two buildings in Bangor were suddenly evacuated Monday morning. We'll explain what happened. And Maine has opted out of a $440 million multi-state settlement with electronic cigarette maker Jewel Labs. That's coming up along with the rest of our stories. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. First, let's check in with meteorologist Devin Biggs. Devin? Hey Susan, happy Tuesday afternoon. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Luigi and Fredericks across from Eastern Maine Medical Center, serving the greater Bangor area for over 65 years. Already, small crowd advisory was in effect earlier this morning. It was dropped at noon, so that means things are looking pretty good for us at this point, though. But moving forward, we do have a few clouds moving in from the southwest to the north and east. So a dreary day, definitely on the way with a slight chance for even a thunderstorm on the way, especially for the southern ends of the state as we head towards the afternoon period. We've even seen some storms with another system out of the Atlantic Ocean, though, with plenty of lightning bolts showing up there. But for us, though, just watching for a few clouds moving in at this point. You will notice some sunshine from time to time. But again, a slight chance for a shower or storm later on this afternoon. But later on tonight, it'll be partly cloudy, but that's fog right there. We'll have to put up with fog again. That'll be developing as we head towards later on tonight of the daytime tomorrow. As for some of the winds from time to time, though, reaching up to around 10 miles per hour today with higher gusts being possible. But later on tonight, a lot of that will begin to back off. Your forecast for today, upper 60s, we'll call it partly cloudy because we'll see a little bit of clearing during the afternoon with an isolated thunderstorm not out of the question. South wind reaching up to about 20 miles per hour. Later on tonight, upper 40s, partly cloudy areas of dense fog out there. That south breeze getting up to about 5 miles per hour. Hourly forecast for the rest of the afternoon period, decreasing clouds, temperatures in the 60s. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. Susan? Thank you, Devin. We have new information regarding a fatal crash on the main turnpike over the weekend. It was part of a chain reaction. Maine State Police responded to a three-vehicle fatal crash near mile marker 104 northbound on the turnpike in West Gardner just before noon on Saturday. The crash was caused by traffic slowing in the area from an accident in the down, down in the turnpike down near Farmingdale. The initial investigation shows a BMW was rear-ended. They say the driver of the BMW has been identified as 53-year-old William Stevenson of Stonington. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Stevenson's female passenger has been identified as 54-year-old Tina Adams of Stonington. She was taken to a local hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. The investigation is still ongoing at this point, but police say the crash did not involve any alcohol or drug impairment. Two buildings in Bangor were evacuated after a car hit a natural gas line Monday morning. Bangor Assistant Fire Chief Andrew Emery says they were called to the Salvation Army store at 585 Broadway just before 10.30. Our first engine in, engine six, did find a car that had cleaned out the uh, gas meter. No structural damage, but there was a gas leak, and uh, Bangor Gas was called by Bangor PD and myself. And we're thankful again that the manager, in her phone call, was able to get all of all of the uh, customers out, got all the employees out, everyone was evacuated safely. It was an accident, and the person involved in the accident is fine too, so we're very happy for that. Your seafood market was also evacuated. Crews dug up the street and clamped off the gas leak. The buildings were ventilated, so the gas levels returned to a safe level. The Salvation Army employees were sent home for the day. The store did reopen today. Maine has opted out of a $440 million multi-state settlement with electronic cigarette maker Juul Labs. Maine would have received roughly $11 million under the agreement announced September 6 that settled a two-year investigation by 33 states into Juul's marketing of its high nicotine vaping products. Maine was not willing to agree to Juul's condition that would have barred school districts from suing the company. Attorney General Aaron Fry said in a statement that the state is unwilling to waive the rights of other entities trying to hold Jewel accountable for what he called deception. The Maine Democrat Party held a press conference addressing a New York Times article which claims former Governor Paul LePage is benefiting from Florida tax breaks while living in the state of Maine. 
The Times article alleges LePage and his wife have used and are currently using their Florida property to receive permanent resident tax breaks while both are pre previously serving as governor and lived in the Blaine House as well as while he's currently running for governor. Maine Democrats say the article shows he received Florida tax breaks from 2009 to 2015 and 2018 through the end of this year. Maine Democratic Party members are calling LePage's alleged actions hypocritical due to his reported push to phase out Maine's income tax and a previous push to eliminate the homestead tax exemption during his time as governor reported by Maine Center for Economic Policy. Vice President for the Maine Democratic Party says voters should take all of this into consideration. Values are relevant to who our leader is. When I'm looking at who I want to vote for for any given office, I want to know that they're smart enough to do the job and that they hold a set of values that allow them to make the best decisions for the state of Maine. A member of the LePage campaign stated he would not respond to false attacks. Maine GOP Chair Dr. Demi Kozausnes released his statements condemning the alleged allegations but did not address the released public records that sparked the tax break concerns. Coming up on ABC 7 News at noon, more Maine families are turning to food pantries to help fulfill their basic needs. We'll learn more after the break. Offensive and divisive. That's Paul LePage's legacy. But it's not just what he said as governor. It's what he did. LePage slashed funding for cancer screenings for women. He refused to invest in clean energy, kicked over a 1,000 seniors off their prescription drug program, and even opposed funding to Meals on Wheels. So if that's what Paul LePage did last time he was governor, we can't send him back. The top funder of a better name is the Democratic Governors Association. I'm Jim with Lowry & Associates. Winning car accident cases is what we do. Check out a few of our big wins. I broke my leg and they got me $205,000. What did the twos do for you? I injured my back and they got me $300,000. What did the twos do for you? I broke multiple bones and Lowry & Associates got me $700,000. Call the twos. We win for you. If you hurt in an accident, what do you do? Call 2 2 2 22 22 I'm 82 years old and I have collapsed arches, which means the first thing that hits the ground is the bone in my, my arch. I came to Comfort Shoes four years ago because I couldn't walk without pain. And she spent so much time on my feet getting the right shoe and we finally found the right pair. Once you made these orthotics for me, I have no pain. These are so comfortable. I have no discomfort. I feel like I could go running. And I thank you and Comfort Shoes for that. Does your dream kitchen look like this, or this, or maybe you need a little more inspiration? Get it when you explore the complete in-store showroom displays at Hammond Lumber Company. When you find the look you like, the Hammond team will help you customize it, including accurate 3D renderings so you can visualize your project before the work begins. Hammond offers delivery from any of the locations across Maine and New Hampshire and professional service after the sale. Your dream kitchen begins when you bring your vision to Hammond Lumber Company. Don't believe the lies from Washington Special Interest. Jared Golden's a different type of Democrat. I respect that Jared served in the Marines. Jared's a friend of law enforcement, and we definitely can trust them to keep our communities and families safe. Jared is standing strongly against defunding the police. This endorsement was not a given. Congressman Golden's earned it. Mr. Golden will definitely uh, fight for us and, and be in our corner and have our backs, absolutely. I'm Jared Golden, and I'm honored to approve this message. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. With the cost of everything increasing, more families are turning to food pantries to help fulfill their basic needs. Matthew Jaroncic spoke to volunteers at the Winslow Community Cupboard to learn more. I'm here at Winslow Community Cupboard, where this location serves more than 200 families at a time, and that number is only getting larger. There's been some times where I haven't had much of a, a choice selection and I can order, you know, to have food here for them. Organizers of the food pantry are asking for food donations during another record month of demand. You know, we, we offer, we try to offer anywhere from, you know, 100 to 200 pounds of food for people. The month of August, um, calculated with all the Good Shepherd and the donations from the local uh, supermarkets, um, and club members and stuff, 
92,000 pounds went out this door last month. Winslow Community Cup Board Director Bruce Particulari says there's many factors that have led to the increase. And with the fuel cost and heating oil for the winter season coming up um, and the food prices that have been happening in the stores, um, people are, are really relying on their food banks that can help them out. Winslow Community Cupboard is open every other Thursday of each month. Particulari says all families that come here are accepted with welcoming arms and given enough food to last weeks. We're just trying to create an atmosphere that they don't have this stigmatism that, oh, I should be embarrassed, I should hang my, my head down because I'm asking for food. And it's not like that here. To help families who are in dire need of food, the food bank formed a partnership with the Stone Cafe located right next door to help feed them. Reverend Nancy Finland of the Starfish Village Ministry, who helps run the Stone Cafe, helps provide lunches to families three times a week free of charge. She's grateful for everything the pantry does to help her restaurant. It really prevents us from having to buy all the food that we would have to buy otherwise if we don't have the partnership with Bruce and his, his pantry. Particularly knows helping those who are less fortunate to him is in his DNA. Personally experience what they're going through when I was a child in my family. Um, you know, not knowing where your next meal is going to come from or what you're going to eat that night for dinner. So it I enjoy helping other people. Reporting from Winslow, Matthew Jaroncic, ABC7 and Fox 22. Now with Tuesday's business news, here's Leo Jonathan. Rent may be getting a little more affordable. Property data company CoStar Group says the national average for asking rents fell 0.1% in August. That's compared to July. No celebrations yet, but still... The Dow posted a 1.1% drop yesterday, which puts it down 20% from its most recent high. As of last Friday, the Dow lost all gains accumulated since January of 2021. The S&P closed down Monday 1%. The Nasdaq ended the day down 0.6%. The Wall Street Journal says a plumbing company in Georgia has come up with a camera system to let veteran plumbers keep a virtual eye on less experienced co-workers. More than a third of small businesses say hiring is tougher now than it's ever been. And USA Today says some breweries are having trouble getting carbon dioxide supplies, which are used to clean tanks and carbonate beer. And when they get it, it's more expensive. I'm Leo Jonathan with Tuesday's Business on ABC7. The My New Shoes program at St. Paul the Apostle Parish in Bangor is in its last week. Started in 2009 by parishioner Susan Shaw, the initiative helped supply kids in elementary and middle school with socks and sneakers when needed. Shaw started the program after a friend told her a story that a teacher bought sneakers for a student who desperately needed shoes. While the program originated in Bangor and Brewer, it has since spread to students in Herman, Hamden, Old Town, and Orrington. Coming up as National Recovery Month comes to an end, we'll learn more about the ongoing opioid crisis in Maine. That's next. We'll be right back. General Rental Center has been serving Central Maine for more than 30 years with an extensive inventory, including mini track loaders with attachments, full-size track skid steer, track loader and backhoe, wheel loader with attachments, a 50-foot towable aerial lift, and a 45-foot self-propelled four-wheel drive lift. If you can't find it on our website, we can find it for you. Call for multi-day and weekend special rates. Feel the difference of alpaca apparel from the Blue Alpaca Ranch and Store in Belfast. Stop by their ranch location to interact with these amazing animals and enjoy the beautiful Maine outdoors with your very own alpaca walk. Shop in-store or online today and take advantage of their free nationwide shipping. With their incredible selection of socks, sweaters, hats, and more, experience the unique qualities that Alpaca Fiber brings with the Blue Alpaca. Feel the difference. Looking to improve or upgrade your home or place of business? With at-home furniture, appliance, and bedding, and kitchen and bath and flooring, we offer a great selection to do just that. From homeowners to commercial businesses and everything in between, our friendly professionals with more than 50 years of combined experience pride themselves in going above and beyond to work with you every step of the way. And we even offer a full-service appliance repair department. Come and visit us at our Dover Foxcroft or our new Lincoln location. Stop in either location today and see what we can do to make you feel at home. 
she got help buying her dream home. Mr. Rea could get a better mortgage rate. He's a blood relative, a cousin. I gave him $10,500. Then she was out. Did you give her back her $10,000? No. Why not? You made a profit of approximately $20,000. Does family mean nothing? She was entitled to about $4,000 for defaulting. I didn't default. He threw me out. I think that you're a scam artist. Amen. Next Judge Judy, Tuesday at 5, only on ABC7. Hey, Red Sox fans, you've got to play You Pick 'em Red Sox at BoxBangor.com. Local weekly winners receive prizes. Register now at FoxBangor.com. You Pick'em Red Sox is sponsored by Twin City Tint in Brewer, Comfort Shoes and More in Newport, Saliba's Rug Cleaners in Bangor, and Twin City Tile in Brewer. As National Recovery Month comes to an end, A.J. Douglas spoke to a local recovery center to learn more about the ongoing opioid crisis. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention reported over 100,000 drug overdose deaths in 2021, which is a 15 percent increase compared to 2020. Senator Angus King has received bipartisan support to spread awareness by recognizing September as National Recovery Month. He released a statement that read in part, quote, the last few years have not been easy. There have been periods of immense stress, difficult isolation and unexpected hardships for all Americans. These conditions have been even more challenging for those battling substance use disorders. In part, quote, Sean Faircloth, executive director of the Together Place, says this is a time to highlight both the breakthroughs and challenges. There's no way around the reality that overdoses have been going up across the entire country and unfortunately even more so here in the state of Maine. Faircloth says the Together Place works to provide constructive creative spaces for those seeking recovery. He explains the importance of getting people in recovery back into the community. It's a community-wide issue very significantly in Bangor. We're seeing the homelessness and a big part of that relates to mental health and relates to substance use issues. Faircloth says awareness is a key factor but financial support is also vital to supporting recovery facilities. With recovery we're at an earlier stage and so there needs to be greater financial investment in housing, in uh, recovery for people with substance use and also in mental health. It's kind of these three issues combined together. Anyone interested in working with the Together Place or receiving services should call 207-941-2897. In Bangor, A.J. Douglas, ABC7, Fox 22. A new study is shedding light on long-term cannabis use and how it impacts your brain. The results may surprise you. ABC's M. Wynn explains. From brownies to gummies, vape pens and pipes, cannabis has adopted many forms. But what do we really know about the lasting effects of long-term use? Research published in the American Journal of Psychiatry says it lowers brain function. Researchers in New Zealand closely followed nearly 1,000 individuals from age 3 to 45. They discovered the IQs of long-term cannabis users declined on average of 5.5 percent from childhood. In addition, long-term cannabis users experienced learning deficits and slower processing speeds compared to their peers. As for whether or not it can lead to higher risk dementia, experts say more research is needed. For more information, please talk to your doctor. With this Medical Minute, I'm M. Wynn, ABC News. Volunteers are helping to rebuild the gym at Fairhaven Camps in the town of Brooks. A fire destroyed the building in January of 2020. Work on the new gym started this past spring. The camp's executive director, Josh Rose, says it's been challenging not to have the space for the past few years. This is great, you know, to be able to get the kids back inside when it's raining or windy or, you know, we do a lot of things off season um, in the winter. So it's great, you know, to have a place where they can run around. Um, there's not a lot of local places for the kids, so we do a lot with the kids in town. The new gym will be a little bit bigger than the old one and have handicapped accessible bathrooms so they can serve more people. Volunteers from Maine and other states have been working on the project. A group from Texas helped build the walls, complete the roofing, and install insulation. The uh, guy who was in charge of materials bring them to us said he was working crazy to stay up with us. They, uh, for people probably average age 70, uh, they don't understand how we can do it so fast. 
Fairhaven Camps is still trying to raise another $250,000 to fund some extra features, including scoreboards, a sound system, and an indoor climbing wall. The executive director says they hope to be using the new gym by next summer. The fall foliage is not the only thing attracting visitors to Maine this time of year. Jody Hersey takes a look. At low tide, Tidal Falls and Hancock puts on quite a show, and the stars of this incredible feature are the starfish themselves. This is, place is incredible. There are starfish everywhere, all different sizes, all different colors. They're right here in their little homes. On the edge of the water, you can spot an array of starfish, which are related to sand dollars, sea urchins, and sea cucumbers, according to the Smithsonian. As we lifted larger rocks, we're finding 11, 15, 17 on the rocks. It was more than we expected. Visitors say as breathtaking as these creatures are, it's their color that takes so many visitors by surprise. The colors really varied from orange to purple. But the purple ones I thought were about the best looking, my personal taste. And the starfish aren't the only ones who enjoy this coveted spot. On this particular day, a playful seal was also attracting the attention of viewers. I saw a seal out there also, that was awesome. I never saw a seal before, so for us from down south. We don't see that many. Oh, and there he is again. Members of the Tidal Falls Preserve say in order for more people to enjoy this coastal show, visitors are asked not to hold, touch, or take the starfish out of the water because it can be detrimental to the starfish population. Instead, folks are encouraged to stop by and enjoy all that nature has to offer from the water's edge. In Hancock, I'm Jody Hersey for ABC7 and Fox 22. When we return, Devin Biggs has your five-day forecast. When it looks the part, but isn't the real thing, that's Fool's Golden. Jared Golden promised he'd be an independent fighter against Biden's spending, but then cast a deciding vote for Biden's newest spending bill that experts say will hike taxes a billion dollars on those making under 50000 Golden may think we're fools, but his recent vote shows Mainers what he's really made of. Congressional Leadership Fund is responsible for the content of this advertising. Established in 1925, Bangor Floral has been a premier provider of beautiful floral arrangements and thoughtful gifts for almost 100 years. Whatever the occasion, our premium collection of colorful blooms, blossoming plants, and gift baskets have warmed hearts for generations. We strongly support the Buy Local movement, purchasing directly from local farms and growers, and we are committed to the preservation of our environment. Bangor Floral, located at 332 Harlow Street. Stop in today to experience a flower shop like no other. Big trucks rule the road. They're dangerous, and they can cause big, bad injuries. But the big trucking companies don't stand a chance against me. I'm Jim with Lowry & Associates. If you've been hurt by a big truck, call the twos. We win for you. Your favorite restaurants for half off. It's Half Off Dining from Fox 22 and ABC7. Here's this week's featured deal. At Firehouse Subs, we give you craveable subs that are piping hot and piled high. And a portion of every purchase helps give them the life-saving equipment they need. Order online or on the app for contactless pickup or delivery. Only at Firehouse Subs. On sale Thursday at 9 a.m. A limited supply available half-off dining from Fox 22 and ABC7. If you're looking to buy or sell a home, chances are you have lots of questions. Norm Prouty has answers. Learn some tips and tricks and explore some beautiful homes on the market. The Norm Prouty and Denell Baker Real Estate Show, Sunday mornings at 6.30 on ABC7. Local emergency disaster volunteers from Maine are heading to Puerto Rico, helping communities there recover from Hurricane Fiona. The Salvation Army of Northern New England Division is sending Libby Farmer, a trained emergency disaster volunteer from the Bath Salvation Army. We'll be handing out food, water, um, ice, personal hygiene kits, cleanup kits, whatever, the, whatever they need. It's not just the item that you're giving them. You're giving them compassion, you're giving them love, and you're giving them hope. And that's, that's really what the Salvation Army is about, is delivering hope to the hopeless. The group's flight out of the Portland jet port was scheduled to take off around 7 o'clock yesterday morning. The goodies at Frank's...
The Bangor are so hard to resist, even means wildlife are drawn to the shore shop. Customers at Frank's Bake Shop on State Street in Bangor alerted the employees about a large moose lurking around the corner. It's not rare to see a moose in Maine, but meeting one in such a heavily populated area in Bangor is out of the ordinary. It was a pretty chill Monday morning, but we had a few people come in pretty excited because there's a moose down the road. Um, one guy came in showing us a bunch of pictures on his phone. Game wardens were notified immediately about the young bull moose. Wardens located him between Hancock and State Street, sedated him, then relocated the animal to a safer location. Yesterday marked the start of the 42nd year of Maine's modern moose hunt. Maine wildlife officials say all the state issued 4,080 permits, the second highest total ever issued. Only about 1,000 are allowed to hunt on the first week in far northern and eastern parts of the state, with the rest of the permits staggered by region into November. Almost 70,000 people applied for permits. Maine wildlife officials say there are some concerns about calf survival in parts of the state due to winter ticks, but overall the moose population as a whole is doing well. We're fortunate to have a big moose population in Maine, um, and we, we do use hunting as a way to manage that population, ensure that it's as healthy as possible, uh, manage vehicle collisions, um, and also provide, you know, excellent table fare for hunters and just a great experience um, out in the main woods in the fall. Wildlife officials say last year about two-thirds of all moose hunters successfully bagged a moose. Now let's check your full forecast with Devin Biggs. Happy Tuesday, Devin. Alrighty, happy Tuesday afternoon. Your full weather forecast brought to you by Scott's Recreation, New England's largest trailer dealer, home of Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices. With locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. That small pet advisory that was in effect earlier is being dropped at noon. It was dropped already as things are starting to improve for us now. But as we do zoom things out, though, we have clouds moving in from the southwest to the north and east with a slight chance for a shower or thunderstorm possible for our southern counties counties during the afternoon period, so especially as we get some breaks into clouds in this area. Low pressure finally starts to get pushed from the west going toward the east, so high pressure up in parts of Canada will keep things nice in that area, but we do have some nicer days on the way, even for us as well. Let's go on a field trip right now. Here we are. This is Hurricane Ian tracking from the south going toward the north, of, pretty much emerging over the Atlantic Ocean now, so this thing's really going to start getting sat together in a big hurry with the uh, ocean temperatures in the uh, Gulf of Mexico. Definitely looking and very warm. Well, otherwise, though, tracking from the south going toward the north as a category three hurricane. So far, they have been maintaining it with winds up to around 125 miles per hour. Moving to the north at about 12 miles per hour. The red shaded areas right about in here and over Cuba are hurricane warnings. The orange shaded areas are tropical storm warnings. A lot of those in effect for Florida. I know we have a decent amount of people that go down to Florida this time of the year. So if you're thinking about it, definitely hold off. This projected path would definitely make you think to do so as it does track off towards the north from time to time as well. And slow Slowing down, as you can tell as well, going from a 4 to a 3 to a tropical storm as it does make landfall and slowing down near the Tampa Bay area. So definitely hold off on making those travels until things start to slow down by this point. But by around Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we'll be putting up with that system. Back here at home, though, here we are. Some gusty winds up to around 15 to 20 miles per hour during the daytime today. Backing off later on tonight as things start to relax, but areas of dense fog look to be on the way. Wind finds nearby at around 3 to 7 feet, according to some of the buoys out there. Those are starting to come down, which is why that small cat advisory has been trend back. Meanwhile, our average high is 66 degrees. We'll reach for the 60s again for the next few days before we cool off Sunday into Monday into the upper 50s, of course, as we head deeper in the fall. Future cast moving forward, though, slight chance for a shower or a storm today and a part of the evening period further off towards the north will be clouds and fog on the way later on tonight. But a lot of that will be tapering off as we head towards the daytime tomorrow, though, though we'll have to watch for a few more clouds and even a few showers again as low pressure continues to move through. So your forecast for today, upper 60s, partly cloudy with an isolated thunderstorm possible. We say partly cloudy because the sky will break up a little bit with regards to the clouds. That south wind reaching up to around 20 miles per hour. Later on tonight, upper 40s, partly cloudy areas of dense fog, south wind getting up to around 5 miles per hour. Tomorrow, middle 60s, partly cloudy with a few showers out there. West wind at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Already, Scott's Recreation extended forecast. We're dry Thursday, Friday, and Saturday with a mixture of clouds and sunshine. Temperatures in the lower to middle 60s Thursday and Friday with the upper 60s on Saturday. Thank you, Devin. That's all for ABC 7 News at noon. Thanks for watching. I'm Susan Farley. We'll see you this evening with Peter Dubois and Beth Jones on ABC 7 News at 6. Have a great afternoon.